Now, we started talking about this a little bit earlier on, the issue of fake doctors. Well, fake doctors are back in the news, and this follows the exposure of social media personality Matthew Lani. The Gauteng Health has laid a criminal complaint against the young man. It says he claimed on social media to be working at Helen Joseph Hospital. But the problem is actually much bigger uh, than the TikTok influencer. In the last three years, over 120 people were arrested for pretending to be registered doctors. The HPCSA found that most fake doctors operate in the private sector. But let's discuss this with SA Medical Association Chair, Dr. Mvuisi Mzugwa. A very good morning to you, Dr. Mzugwa. So, so talk to us first about this. I mean, yes, they say that most of the um, quote-unquote fake doctors are found in the private sector. But according to what we've seen, uh, Matthew Lani actually appeared on a, uh, a, an ex uh, tweet by the Gauteng government and they called him a medical intern. Apparently, there are some who say that they've seen him in the hallways of, of, um, of, of Helen Joseph as well as uh, Chris Hani Baraguana's hospital. So where do you find the fake doctors? Private sector? Public sector, everywhere, who are they? Good morning to you, Tommy, and uh, to Gareth and to your, to your listeners. Um, you know, this is a serious concern from the South African Medical Association. You know, if we look at the, you know, developments around the issue of bogus doctors, but like you said, you know, these uh, mostly were, I think our focus was in the private sector. You know, HBCSA was focusing on that uh, side of the world. But we, we have noted, uh, like you said, we have noted that there are August doctors in the public sector as well. And at times they find themselves, you know, uh, uh, acquiring higher positions, even in the system. So we do think that, you know, the focus should not only be one-sided. It should be both the, 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 the private sector and the public sector. And especially in those areas that are, are in the periphery, in terms of rural areas and stuff like that. But we know now also that in the urban areas, in the big hospitals, you know, they could be a, a hiding place for bogus doctors. So what type of vetting processes are there, Dr. Mzuga, if um, a young man like Lani can actually be posted by Gauteng Health and they call him a medical intern? How does that happen? I think um, we all need to be very vigilant uh, and not be uh, overtaken by the hype of the social media uh, in all our spheres. I do think that officials in the Department of Health should have consulted first with the HPCSA to verify the registration of that uh, medical doctor, if it was a medical doctor. I think that's the first step. Whoever employs uh, a, a person or interacts with the person who's supposed to be a medical doctor the first step is to approach hpcsa and make a verification but also we know that it is the duty of the hpcsa as a regulatory body to be uh, protecting communities uh, by making sure that people that are out there are real doctors i don't think that it was fair uh, to allow you know um, only the department of health to be to dealing with this thing when we have a, a regulatory body, we should be going out. I know that they've got an inspect, uh, inspectorate uh, uh, office that should be uh, you know, up and about looking for focus doctors. It can't be a, a, a HBCSA alone. It, it should be a societal uh, uh, issue, but it must be led by the HBCSA. I think we need HBCSA to come up with a plan, a collaborative plan, you know, to uh, clamp down on, on on this focus doctors because it is their responsibility to be protecting uh, uh, communities so you mentioned that the the practice number is very important so one should ask your medical practitioner what their practice number is according to what we've read here as far as Lani is concerned, when people asked him what his practice number was, he said, no, he doesn't have to share that information. Are medical practitioners um, obligated to share their practice numbers with prospective patients or whoever it is who may be asking? Yeah, tell me that's very important. It, it, they must share their practice numbers, especially if that person is a, is a, is a, is a client. 
I mean, if you, for example, is a, I'm a private practitioner and people are coming to use my services, they must verify that I'm a registered practitioner by requesting one, an MP number, which is a registration number that you get from the uh, HPCSA. But secondly, they must get a registration number uh, that is, uh, 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 you get it from a BHF, which is the actual practice number. So there are two numbers, one for the HPCSA, but also the other for the for the uh, uh, BHF. So those are very important uh, 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 practice numbers that will help anyone, you know, want to verify if it's a registered practitioner or not, because both of them, uh, either um, uh, BHF wouldn't give you a practice number if you are not a registered uh, 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 practitioner with HPSA. So there must be a verification. It can't, you can't hide behind the fact that you, it, it's, your, it's, your, it's not private. It must be known by the public that you have a practice number and you are registered by HPSA. There's no two ways about it. So what are the legal ramifications for actions such as this for Lani and others like him? Well, this is a criminal uh, activity. Uh, I don't think HPCSA has anything, to, any jurisdiction in this in this area. But I do think that uh, um, the law enforcement agencies, now that there's a criminal case, they need to deal with this. But we can't be dealing this, you know, on a piecemeal approach. We do need to have a plan. HPCSA must have a plan. You know, lead that plan. Uh, collaborate with the law enforcement agencies collaborate with communities, go out there in full force. They are not short of resources. We are paying millions of rents to HPCSA to protect the public of South Africa. So we can't be expecting them to be waiting to be told that so-and-so is a bogus doctor. They must be all out, get into the social media space, make sure that they identify those, but also go into communities, especially those areas that are vulnerable, and looking out for those bogus doctors. I'm wondering, Dr. Mzuko, as, as we're talking, yes, there are the legal steps that the HP um, CSA can take. But if, for example, you've actually been treated by a bogus doctor, what can you as a patient do legally? Because here's somebody, uh, you put your health, your life in their hands, and yet they were not even qualified uh, to be administering any sort of medication to you. They were not qualified to you, you know, be knowing intimate things about you there's nothing that binds you to them legally. What kind of ramifications are there for them from the perspective of the patient? Like I said, Tammy, you know, this is a, like we, we agree, this is not a doctor. So you can't use these avenues of HPCSA and stuff like that. It has to be a criminal case. Whether it's, a, a, you know, civil litigation or whatever, but it, you can't use those routes now because it has been identified this person is not, is, is not a doctor. Like I said initially, the important thing is that if you are approaching a doctor, you must request these two things. Unless, for, for example, you're going to a state hospital. But in the, even in the state hospital, you can request for a, an MP number. You must know that you are treated by a, 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 a proper doctor. And if you are going to a private, also you can request for an MP number, but also a, 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 a practice number two numbers that you need to know, then you verify that. I think we do need to uh, get into the prevention space before we deal with the, 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 the curative aspects. So the important thing, uh, verify that you are dealing with a real practitioner, but also if you have found that you've been treated by a non-practitioner, then you do need to go to uh, lay a case in the, uh, with the police because now you are treated with, uh, you, you are in the hands of the criminal. You are in the hands of a criminal. Really harsh, but, uh, you know, so true because ultimately that's what it is. So thank you so much um, for your time. That was the chairperson uh, of the South African Medical Association, Dr. Mvuyisi Mzuko.